السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد so inshallah we'll continue from where we left off and we've arrived at the last nullifier within this book where the Sheikh discussed the 10 nullifiers of Islam and as he mentioned at the beginning of the book there are many more than 10 nullifiers in Islam that nullify Islam but the Sheikh has brought this small treatise and has covered the 10 most um, um, 10 most sort of popular let's say um, uh, nullifiers that people fall into so the 10 most often ones should we say that the Muslims fall into and so the Sheikh he continues he arrives on the 10th um, nullifier within this book and this is the final one inshallah so we'll try and cover as much as we can this lesson and then uh, perhaps uh, next week's lesson will complete this book, inshallah, and then begin another book with the last permission. <clears throat> so anybody who's new to this uh, uh, to these lessons, then we read the Arabic and we translate it as we go along, inshallah. So <clears throat> the Sheikh, he says, يَقُولُ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامُ مُحَمَّدِ بِنُ عَبْدُ الْوَهَابِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ وَغَفْرَ لَهُ فِي كِتَابِ نَوَاقِدَ الْإِسْلَامِ الْعَاشِرِ الْإِعْرَادُ عَنْ دِينِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَا يَتَعَلَّمُهُ وَلَا يَأْمَلُ بِهِ وَدَلِيلُ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ ثُمَّ أَعْرَضَ عَنْهَا إِنَّا مِنَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُنْتَقِمُونَ سُورَةُ السَّجْدَةِ verse 22 وَلَا فَرْقَ فِي جَمِيعِ هَذِهِ النَّوَاقِضِ بَيْنَ الْهَازِلِ وَالْجَادِ وَالْخَائِفِ إِلَّا الْمُكْرَهِ وَكُلُّهَا مِنْ أَعْظَمِ مَا يَكُونُ خَطَرًا وَإِنْ أَكْثَرِ مَا يَكُونُ وُقُوءًا فَيَنْبَغِي لِلْمُسْلِمِ أَنْ يَحْذَرَهَا وَيَخَافَ مِنْهَا عَلَى نَفْسِهِ نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ مُوجِبَاتِ غَدْبِهِ وَأَلِيمِ الْإِقَابِهِ وصلى الله على خير خلقه محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم So the Sheikh says that the original author Sheikh Al-Islam Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله May Allah have mercy upon him and may Allah forgive him he says in his book, The Nullifiers of Islam, the 10th Nullifier, and that is to turn away from the religion of Allah Jalla wa'ala, the deen of Al-Islam, by way of not learning it and neither acting upon it. And the evidence of that is the ayah that we read, the ayah that we read uh, here on this page from Surah to sajda verse 22. And if we look at the meanings of that, give me a second to pull that up. If we look at the meanings of that translation then, what does it tell us? So Surah to sajda verse 22. <clears throat> Allah says, And who does more wrong than he who is reminded of the ayat, i.e. proofs, evidences, verses, lessons, signs, revelations, etc. of his Lord, then he turns aside therefrom. And then the rest of the ayah is, Verily we shall exact retribution from the mujrimin, or the mujrimun, criminals, disbelievers, polytheists, sinners, etc. So the Sheikh he brings this evidence for this 10th uh, nullifier, and he goes on to explain. So this is from the original text, this in the bold. Uh, the rest of the text is the explanation of the Sheikh who's explaining it. It was the Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr, Hafidhullah. So the, the Sheikh, he mentions the original part where the original author has mentioned here, he says, what does it mean? He says, there's no difference in these nullifiers. It, it doesn't differ and differentiate between the one who's jesting and joking about any of these nullifiers. If he falls into any of these nullifiers by joking or jesting or whether he's serious or whether he fears. Except the person who has been placed under the ORS, he's excused. But anybody who's just joking around, obviously if you're joking around, as we know, if you're joking around with the deen and you fall into any of these nullifiers, for example, then you end up leaving the fold of Al-Islam. 
uh, obviously, the uh, person who said yes, then that's clear. The, the Sheikh will explain later, but I will mention it here. Um, the affair is clear. If somebody said yes upon their disbelief or them going into these uh, nullifiers of Islam that nullify their deen, then that's clear for anyone to see. There's no issue. And then the third uh, category of uh, people are those who are scared because of a thing from the dunya that they're scared of losing. Um, then they basically end up committing kufr by way of these um, nullifiers of Islam. And the exception to this rule is the person who is under DRS. So a person who is under DRS and is being forced to say something of kufr, then the Sheikh Ali Azi will explain later on the lesson, if we reach that part of the lesson, he mentions that there are conditions for this and that the person who is under DRS, then he, he or she does not leave the fold of Islam. And he'll explain that inshallah as we go through the lesson. And then he goes on to say here, and these are from the most greatest mistakes, the most gravest mis mistakes, as in these 10 nullifiers are from the most grave of them. And they are from those that people fall into the most. So then the Sheikh, he says, so therefore it's incumbent for the Muslim to be aware of these and to fear these, to stay away from them, meaning to stay away from these, don't fall into these nullifiers. And then he says that, you know, we seek refuge with Allah Jalla Ala from his uh, anger and from his uh, punishment. And then he uh, give, uh, gives salam upon the Prophet, uh, send citations, blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. Then the Shaykh continues, he says, goes on to explain now uh, that what we've read just there. He says, هَذَا هُوَ النَّاقِذُ الْعَاشِرِ مِنَ النَّوَاقِذُ الْعَاشِرَ لِلْإِسْلَامِ الَّتِي جَمْعَاهَا شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ مُحَمَدِ ibn عَبْدُ الْوَهَابِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ نُصْحًا وَتَحْذِيرًا وَهُوَ الْإِعْرَادُ عَنْ دِينِ اللَّهِ لَا يَتَعَلَّمُهُ وَلَا يَعْمَلُ بِهِ الْإِعْرَادُ الْكُلِّ عَنْ دِينِ عَنِ الدِّينِ بِحَيْثُ تَكُونُ حَالُ الْإِنسَانِ حَالُ الْإِنسَانُ مَعَ دِينِ اللَّهِ أَنَّهُ لَا يَأْبَهُ بِالدِّينِ وَلَا يَهْتَمْ يَعْرِدُ عَنْ الدِّينِ من جهة التعلم والمعرفة بهذا الدين ويعرض عن الدين من جهة العمل فلا يأمل به فمن كان على هذه الحال مؤردا عن الدين الذي خلق لأجله ووجد لتحقيقه لا يتعلمه ولا يأمل به لا يتعلمه أي لا يتعلم أصول الدين التي عليها قيامه ولا يتعلم أحكام الشريعة وفرائض الإسلام وواجبات الدين لا يتعلم ذلك مؤردا عن ذلك كله وكأن الدين شيء لا يعنيه فلا يبال به ولا يهتم لا من جهة العلم ولا من جهة العمل مثل هذا يقال عنه متحلل من الدين أو منحل عن الدين بسبب الإراد التام منه عن دين الله تبارك وتعالى من جهة العلم والعمل فهذا كفر ويسمى هذا النوع وهذا النوع من الكفر كفر الإعراض أي أن صاحبه مؤرض عن الدين فهذا النوع من الكفر يسمى كفر الإعراض لإعراض صاحبه عن دين الله تبارك وتعالى لا يتعلمه ولا يأمل به بمعنى أن الدين ليس داخل في احتماماته وليس من الأمور التي هي محل عنايته عنايته إعراض تام عن دين الله تبارك وتعالى ومن كان بهذه الصفة وعلى هذا الحال فهو كافر لأن الدين الذي خلق لأجله وأوجد لتحقيقه لا يعنيه شيئا ولا يهتم به تعلما ولا عملا So then the Sheikh says in this paragraph he mentions he says that this tenth nullifier it is from the 10 nullifiers of Islam that we've obviously gone through over the last several weeks and months. And the Sheikh mentions, he says that the original author has mentioned these um, nullifiers as advice to us and to make us aware so we don't fall into these nullifiers of Islam and nullify our deen. And this 10th nullifier is to do with the person who turns away from the religion of Islam 
doesn't bother learning it, nor does he bother acting upon it. He just turns away from it. Doesn't bother with it at all. It's a complete turning away from the deen of Allah. Where the person doesn't learn and doesn't even act upon the deen. Doesn't care about it. It doesn't care. It doesn't, um, it doesn't pass his mind. It's just there and he doesn't act upon it. This is what the Sheikh mentions here. He also goes on to say that at the end of the day, Allah created mankind and jinn. He created us to worship him and to actualize the tawheed of Allah, to direct all worship to Allah alone only. This is the reason why, we, this is the primary reason why human beings and the jinn were created. And so then he reminds us of this again and he says that the person, he falls into this irad or turning away by firstly not learning the deen of Allah. And because he's not learning the deen of Allah, then he can't act upon it because he has no knowledge of the deen and he's not bothered. He doesn't know the foundations of the religion. He doesn't know what the, the basics of the deen are really. Uh, he doesn't know the rulings of the sharia that concern him, for example. He doesn't know the obligations of, of the deen. And therefore, he's turning away from it completely. And it's as if the, the religion, this religion, is a thing that doesn't concern him. It, it, it doesn't pass his mind. It doesn't cross his mind. He, he doesn't care about it. This is what the Sheikh is saying from this point of view. He doesn't care about learning and doesn't care about acting upon it and actualizing it in his actions. And therefore, the Sheikh says that the person, this sort of person is completely detached from the deen of Islam. He's detached from it. And he says this is what results in this person leaving the fold of Islam. And he uses the word munhal, which is a detached or mutahallil, detached. And he says that this type of kufr is called kufrul irad the disbelief of turning away, as he's explained already, the meaning of that. And then he goes on to say here, and he repeats, uh, and he mentions here that the person, the main point here is that the person is not bothered, he's not bothered about learning the deen of Allah, and nor is he bothered about acting upon what is obligatory for him to do in terms of the commandments of Allah and his prohibitions. What, the, what Allah sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with, and then he says anybody who fits this category or this description or these characteristics then he leaves the fold of Islam because of uh, the explanation that the Sheikh has given he carries on he says وَذَكَرَ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الدَّلِيلَ عَلَى هَذَا النَّاقِذَ وَهُوَ عَلَى هَذَا النَّاقِذِ وَهُوَ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَمَنْ أَذْلَمُ مِمَّنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ ثُمَّ أَعْرَدَ عَنْهَا and as, as mentioned earlier, the Sheikh brings the evidence again and he says that the evidence mentioned by the original author also is what we mentioned earlier as well. And he says, and who does more wrong than he who is reminded of the ayat, proofs, evidences, verses, lessons, signs, revelations, etc. of his Lord. Then he turns aside therefrom, verily we shall exact retribution from the mujrimun, criminals, disbelievers, polytheists, sinners, etc. And this is the primary evidence for this 10th nullifier. He, can, he continues. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يَنْتَقِمُ مِنَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ بِالْعُقُوبَةِ الْغَلِيظَةِ وَالنَّكَالَ الشَّدِيدِ وَهَذَا إِجْرَامٌ فَضِيءٌ وَإِنْ, وإن كَانَ مَنْ ظَلَّ عَنْ, عن الْهُدَى وَسَلَكَ سَبِيلَ الْهَلَاكِ وَالْرِدَى لَا يَحِسُّ بِأَنْ هَذَا مِنْ أَعْذَمَ الْإِجْرَامِ وَأَشْنَعُهُ so then the Sheikh says here, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, will, uh, will, will retribute these criminals with, with, with a severe punishment, uh, a severe punishment because of the, 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 the crimes that, uh, that, that they've committed and that uh, in terms of turning away from the deen, turning away from it, um, and one who's turned away from guidance and not, um, traversed that path of guidance Rather they've turned away And they've chosen the path of destruction This is what the Sheikh mentions here And 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 as as if you contemplate over it If if you heard about the guidance Or guidance has come to you And then you, know, you turn away from it Then how disgusting can that be And how uh, And how bad is it And awful is it That someone after being given guidance Turns away from it and doesn't care about it. So then the Sheikh continues. He says, 
وكلمة الإجرام والمجرم والمجرمين في أذهان في أذهان كثير من الناس تحددت في أنواع في أنواع من الذنوب الكبار كالعدوان كقطع الطريق كالتسلط على الناس في أموالهم تحددت في هذه المعاني بينما الإراد عن دين الله تبارك وتعالى لا يتعلم الدين ولا يأمل به هذا إجرام من أشنع الإجرام ومن أفضعه بل إن هذا النوع من الإجرام يتولد عنه أنواع الإجرام الأخرى أنواع الجرائم الأخرى تتولد عن ذلك لأن الإنسان إذا حل من الدين ولم يكن عنده دين يضبطه في سلوكه في عمله في معاملاته فإنه سيمارس أنواء من الإجرام فالدين يضبط الإنسان لأنه إذا وجد عنده الدين وجدت مخافة الله مراقبته طلب أجره الخوف من إيقابه سبحانه وتعالى أما المعرض عن دين الله فهو معرض عن الثواب عن الإيقاب معرض عن الجزاء معرض عن المراقبة والخوف من الله سبحانه وتعالى كل هذه المعاني معرض عنها بينما إذا اهتم أو وفقه الله سبحانه وتعالى للاهتمام بهذا الدين وشرح صدره لدين الله تبارك وتعالى استقامت أحواله الأخرى بحسب هذه من الاست... من, ال... من الاستمساك بهذا الدين والاستقامة عليه والاستقامة عليه So then the Sheikh he goes on to say this word uh, which relates to mujrim, criminal in the Arabic language he says in, in the many of the people's minds um, they've kind of uh, focused the meaning of this word or the context of this word to be or related to the major sins, for example, like, um, you know, cutting the uh, uh, the pathways of people, um, uh, oppressing people, um, you know, doing all kinds of um, uh, oppressions and the likes of these kinds of deeds from the major sins. This is what most people, he says, think about when they hear the word mujrim. Um, however, he says, if you think about it, in relation to the topic we're discussing today, then at the end of the day, the mujrim that's being mentioned here is the one who turns away from the deen of Allah, as the Sheikh mentioned earlier, turns away from the deen of Allah, doesn't bother learning it, doesn't bother acting upon it, then this crime is actually, it's worse. It's worse than the other things that people usually associate the word crime with. And it's the worst of them. Because you're turning away from the deen completely. Why? The Sheikh, he explains, why is it the worst? And he says, because what happens is, when you turn away from the deen, when the person turns away from the deen and doesn't bother acting upon it anymore, and kind of goes away from actually uh, actualizing the deen and what's upon him, then one sin leads to the next. One action leads to the next. It's, it's a, a snowball effect. The person is not following guidance. He's not thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watching him. There's no taqwa there. Um, there's no doing good deeds. There's no incentive of doing good deeds. There's no incentive or thought process that I'm going to be rewarded. There's none of this going on in this person's mind. And so one thing leads to the next and a snowball effect. And the person just ends up being worse, 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 further and further away from the deen. This is the reason why the Sheikh has mentioned here that it's the worst of them because it leads a person to destruction and in fact uh, uh, and also causing trials and tribulations as well from this person that who he may be around and so this is what the sheikh mentions here that the person turns away he doesn't care about uh, receiving a, a goodly reward for good actions or he doesn't care about uh, he doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know he may be punished if he's doing bad things um, anything like that not bothered praying, none of that stuff, staying away, not bothered at all. It doesn't affect him, this person that's on this path. And this is why. So then the Sheikh continues. He says, as opposed to obviously the person who's upright, the person who's upright and does all kinds of good deeds, remembers that Allah sees him and hears him and sees what he does. 
and that he knows that Allah will reward him for doing good and following obviously the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu following the deen as it should be, he will get rewarded. And he knows that he will be punished if, if, if he obviously turns away from that or falls into error. He knows, he's aware, this person is an upright person. This person obviously is on the right track and you see the fruits of that, a person like this, a person of upright moral character. You see this. <clears throat> then the Sheikh, he uh, continues and he says, he says, وَلِهَذَا يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يُؤْلَمْ أَنَّ الْإِعْرَادَ أَنْ دِينِ اللَّهِ تَبَارِكُ وَتَعَلَى لَا يَتَعَلَّمُهُ وَلَا يَأْمُلْ بِهِ جَرِيمًا مِنْ أَكْبَرَ الْجِرَائِمُ وَأَشْنَائِهَا وَأَفْضَائِهَا بَلْ هِيَا مِنْ أَذَا مَسْبَاب فُشُوء الْجِرَائِمُ الْأُخْرَى وَانْتِشَارِهَا فِي الْمُجْتَمَعَاتِ فَإِنَّ الْمُجْتَمَعَ الَّذِي يَكْثُرُ فِيهِ إعراد أهله عن دين الله سبحانه وتعالى لا يتعلمونه ولا يعملون به تفشو فيه الجرائم وتن و و وتنشر فيه أنواع الرذائل والخسائس ويكثر فيه الظلم والبغي ويقل فيه الأمن ويكثر فيه العدوان بينما إذا أقبل الناس الناس على دين الله عز وجل سلحت حالهم في كل باب وتحق وتحقق أو تحقق لهم أو وتحقق لهم الأمن والطمأنينة والسعادة كما قال الله عز وجل الذين آمنوا ولم يلبسوا إيمانهم بظلم أولئك لهم الأمن وهم مهتدون وقال جل وعلا فمن اتبع هدايا فلا يذل فلا يذل ولا يشقى. سدان so الشيخ he finishes this paragraph off and he says well the person who turns away uh, from the guidance of Allah Jalla wa'ala and doesn't act upon it then what results from that is a complete uh, destruction of society um, where that person is and where if 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 people if people of this kind of mindset who turn away from the deen of Allah increases in a in a in a society or a population then you see all kinds of corruption this is what the shaykh is saying because them being far away from Allah they, you, you see all sorts of crimes all sorts of oppressions all sorts of lowly, immoral acts and all sorts of things like this. All the evil deeds, they're, they're happening. They happen more uh, and, and oppressions that occur. However, on uh, contrast to that, in a, in a country or a place where a population are mostly, uh, are, are the majority are following the deen of Allah, they are live, they're doing their best to live by those rules. You, there you see peace, prosperity, happiness, and you see security. So this, these are the fruits of being upright. And this the Sheikh um, explains this here. Then he quotes uh, a couple of ayahs from the Quran. The first of which is from Surah Al-An'am verse 82. And the second one is from Surah Ta'ha uh, Ta verse 123. So let's go through the, them. And he quotes this as evidence for uh, what is mentioned here. So Surah Al-An'am. Let's go there. Give me a second. Verse 82. <clears throat> it is those who believe in the oneness of Allah and worship none but Him alone and confuse not their belief with zulm, wrong, i.e. by worshipping others besides Allah. For them only there is security and they are the guided. Then, if you go to Surah Taha, uh, Taha Allah said, Get you down from paradise to the earth, both of you together. Some of you are an enemy to some others. Then pay attention to this part. Then if there comes to you guidance from me, then whoever follows my guidance shall neither go astray nor fall into distress and misery. So these are the evidences that the Sheikh is using. And he says, A yes ad Fadinu Yatarattab ala wujudi wa wujud saada wal aman wa tumaknina wa the hab din bili arad anhu yatarattab alay fasad al mushtamaat. So then the Sheikh says, in summary then, following the deen, if a society is following the deen as best as it can and doing what, is a, uh, what it's supposed to do, then what results from that is happiness, security and contentment. And if a society does not do that, then what results from that is corruption, 
um, in the society, um, uh, uh, secure uh, insecurity and the descending of fear and crimes everywhere. You get corruption of society generally. This is what the Sheikh's mentioning. So he goes on to say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ أَذْلَمُ مِمَّنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ ثُمَّ أَعْرَدَ عَنْهَا So as mentioned earlier, this was at the start of the lesson. He goes on to say, أَيَّةَ لَقْتَ التَّذْكِيرِ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ أَزَّ وَجَلْ بِالْإِعْرَادَ التَّامْ عَمَّا يُذَكَّرُ بِهِ مِنْ جَهَةِ التَّعَلُّمْ فَلَا يُلْقِي بَالًا لِتَعَلَّمَ الدِّينِ وَمَعْرِفَتُهُ وَمِنْ جَهَةِ الْعَمَلِ لَا يُلْقِي أي اهتمام اهتمام للعمل بدين الله سبحانه وتعالى فمن كان بهذا الصفة فإنه كافر كفر أكبر وفعله هذا ناقض من نواقض الدين ويسمى هذا النوع من الكفر كما قدمت كفر الإعراض لأن الكفر أنواع منه كفر الشك وكفر النفاق وكفر التكذيب ومن أنواع كفر الإعراض هو ناقض من نواقض الإسلام. so then the sheikh repeats a few things here. I won't repeat them. But the new thing that's mentioned here in this paragraph, as you mentioned earlier as well, I'll mention this point just to, just to help us uh, uh, understand what's, uh, what's being said, that the kufr that we're talking about in this lesson is called kufr al disbelief of turning away from the deen. And the sheikh mentions a few others. He says there's also a disbelief of having doubts, disbelief of hypocrisy, disbelief of uh, lying, so for example, somebody might say, uh, oh, the Quran is not the word of Allah and you know, things like this. Taklib. And the Sheikh says, these are some of the types of kufr. But we're focusing today on this, uh, on this um, uh, nullifier, which is concerning uh, the kufr of turning away from the deen of Islam and not acting upon it. The Sheikh, he goes on to say, ثُمَّ خَتَمَ musannif رَحْمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى كَلَامَهُ عَلَى هَذِي النَّوَاقِدَ الْعَشْرَةِ للإسلام ببيان ببيان أنه لا فرق في هذه النواقض بين الهازل والجاد والخائف إلا المكره يعني لا فرق بين أن تقع هذه الأمور من الشخص من باب الهزل لا من باب الجد أو أن تقع منه جاد فيها أو أن تقع منه خائفا فلا فرق بين ذلك كل ذلك ينتقد به الإسلام فمن وقع في شيء من هذه النواقد هازلا يعني فعل شيء من هذه النواقد من باب الهزل لا من باب الجد فهذا يكفر لأن دين الله لأن دين الله سبحانه وتعالى ليس فيه هزل دين الله جد لا هزل فيه فمن هزل بشيء من دين الله أو فعل شيء من الأمور التي تنقد الإسلام ويقول فعلت ذلك هازلا أو فعلت ذلك مازحا مثل أن يستغيث شخص شخص بغير الله مدد يا فلان أدركني يا فلان أنا عائد بك يا فلان فلما أنكر عليه قال أنا أمزح لست جادا أو مثلا شخص استهزأ بشيء من دين الله وعرفنا أن من أن من نواقد الدين الاستحزاء قل أب الله وآياته ورسوله كنتم تستحزئون استهزأ بشيء من دين الله تبارك وتعالى وقال لست جادا وإنما أمزح من باب المزح والهزل أو أي ناقد آخر من نواقد الإسلام ارتكبه وقال إني فعلت ذلك من باب الهزل لا من باب الجد فهذا ناقض من نواقض الإسلام لأن دين الله جد. So then the Sheikh says in this paragraph, he says that the Sheikh completes his treaties or his short book, may Allah have mercy upon him, um, with this, with uh, uh, the speech uh, regarding this tenth nullifier, and he uh, and he talks about and he says that there's no difference between uh, someone joking and jestingly falling into any of these uh, nullifiers of Islam by jest or by joke or by seriousness 
or by fear. Accept the one who is under duress. There's an exception for that person who's under duress because he's being forced. But the other categories, jokingly doing it, seriously doing it, obviously that's a no-brainer for us, seriously doing it, or fear of something from the dunya, then any of that, then they end up uh, falling into nulli, uh, into any of these nullifiers of Islam by way of uh, any of these approaches, j- j- jesting or joking, being serious about it or fear. And the exception is, being put under DRS. That's the exception he'll explain, inshallah. So the Shaykh, he says that the original author, he mentions here that there's no difference between these categories of people. And he says, why? Because he says that the religion of Allah, it is serious. It is a serious matter. Every believer, every Muslim, he doesn't take his religion as a joke. It's dear to us. That's what the Shaykh says. It is something dear to us. It is something invaluable to us. We don't joke around with it. And likewise, on the other hand, um, um, fearing it. So the Sheikh, he gives some example. He says, for example, if somebody said um, something, which example did he mention here? He says, if somebody jokingly says something, uh, for example, he seeks assistance with other than Allah. For example, he says, uh, mother, the Afulan, for example, he says, oh, help me, so-and-so, some dead person. He's saying to, going by the person's grave or wherever he may be, and he calls upon a person instead of calling upon Allah. Of course, he falls into shirk. Yeah? Or if he says, oh, help me, or seeks refuge with other than Allah, and he falls into a shirk, for example, in this example that Sheikh has brought for us. And then he says, oh, I was only joking. I was only jesting and joking. I wasn't being serious. Even if the person's joking, because he's, fall, he's fallen into a nullify of Islam and he's saying he's joking, it still counts as being nullified. And the Sheikh brings the evidence. He says, why? And what's the evidence? And he mentioned this ayah uh, a few lessons ago um, in a different lesson. And it's a well-known ayah. Uh, and we, we, we read it. That, قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَحْزِئُونَ So say, is it... Is it with Allah and his, and his signs and his messenger that you were jesting or joking or mocking? And then the end of the ayah, what does it say if we go on to read the end of the ayah from Surah Tawbah verse 65? You, uh, after you have believed, you have disbelieved after you had believed. And this, uh, this verse, as you know, was revealed um, about um, um, the munafiqeen who were joking. About the deen of Allah. <clears throat> so the Shaykh, he says, this is an evidence for this. And it could be in any of the nullifiers. Anything that nullifies one's deen, if the person's joking about it, then, it, you know, because it's a serious matter, and this is the evidence for it, that, that the person falls into disbelief. The Shaykh, he goes on to say, وَالْهَزْلُ بِالدِّينِ أَوْ تَعَاتِي بَعْدِ الْأُمُورِ الَّتِي تَنَاقَدَ الدِّينِ مِنْ بَابِ الْهَزْلِ the uh, so the لهذا الدين المستسلم المنقاد المدعن المسلم وجهه الله وجهه لله تبارك وتعالى لا يمكن أن يجعل دينه أو شيء من دينه محلا للهزل وإذا هزل بشيء لا يحزل بدينه لأن دينه أثمن شيء عنده وأغلى شيء يملكه فوقوع الإنسان في شيء من هذه النواقد ولو من باب الهزل كفر ناقل من ملة الإسلام 
So in this paragraph to summarize, the Shaykh, he says, he says that for a Muslim um, who's uh, Allah has given success and he is one who's in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's upon guidance and successful and he has, you know, he submitted himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and lowered himself and humbled himself. This person, this person does not take his deen lightly. He nor does he joke with it, nor does he play around with it, nor does he jest, or nor does he mock. Be why? Because his religion is precious to him and it is something invaluable to him. And it's not possible for a person to play around with his deen or joke about it or mock it. Whereas the person who does mock it, if you find a person in this situation of this kind of character, why is he doing that? It's because there is some level of turning away. If it's not complete turning away, but there's some form of turning away from the deen. And he is not, um, this person is not in a state of um, agreeing, um, agreement with the deen. Because a person, as we all know, brothers, we agree with everything with the deen. We say it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We accept it. We are in complete agreement with it. Whereas a person who's in a doubt, for example, or doesn't agree with things, then obviously there's a form of turning away. And that's the reason why then the person mocks and jests with the deen. So it's very important to uh, understand this principle uh, correctly. So we can stay far away from falling into any of these uh, situations by the permission of Allah. The Shaykh, he goes on to say, قَالَ <clears throat> فَرْقَ فِي جَمِيءِ هَذِهِ النَّوَاقِذِ بَيْنَ الْحَازِلِ وَالْجَادِ وَالْجَادِ وَادِهُمْ وَادِهُمْ كُفْرُهُ مَنْ يَفَلْ شَيْءٍ مِنْ هَذِهِ النَّوَاقِذِ جَادَ فِي ذَلِكَ يَأْنِي مُقْتَنِعٌ فِيهَا وَرَضِيَهَا لِنَفْسِهِ وَاشْتَهَدَ فِي أَنْ يَكُونَ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا فَهَذَا لَا شَكَّ أَنَّهُ كَافِرٌ كُفْرٌ مُبَيِّنًا نَاقِلٌ مِنْ نَاقِلًا مِنْ مِلَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ So as for the one who, moving on from the person who jests with the deen, moving to um, the person who's serious about saying things that are from the nullifiers of Islam about the deen, then obviously this matter is clear. As the Sheikh says, he says this matter is clear. The person is serious and he means it. And so his kufr is, is straight up, is, it's identified, the person said this about what he's saying, and he's pleased with what he's saying, and he's content with what he's saying. And so there's no doubt in this, uh, in that this person has uh, left the fold of Islam and is clear and clarified because of his seriousness. The Sheikh moves on to the third category, the one who fears something. He'll explain this now. He says, Allah, والخائفي أي من فعل شيئا من هذه النواقد خوفا إما مثلا خوفا على مال أو خوفا على تجارة أو خوفا على رئاسة أو خوفا على وجاهة أو خوفا على دنيا يحصلها أو غير ذلك أو غير ذلك فإذا فعل شيئا من هذه النواقد من باب الخوف فإنه يكفر لأنه قدم خوفه على هذه الأشياء الدنيوية على دينه وصارت هي المقدمة على دينه يضيع دينه وتذهب أصوله ويقع في وتذهب أصوله ويقع فيما ينقده وينقده وتسلم له دنياه أو تسلم له رئاسته أو يسلم له ماله أو يسلم له جاهه أو غير ذلك فهذا ناقض من نواقض الإسلام. So then the Sheikh says regarding fear, he says the person who fears, what does he mean? He says, i.e., the one who does a thing that constitutes a nullify of Islam in fear. For example, fearing um, his wealth or wealth, or fearing business or transactions or trading or fearing. Um, uh, leadership or losing some kind of position with the people or whatever it may be from his dunya or that he or fearing not being able to obtain something from the dunya 
And other than that, from the likes of these kinds of examples, it says anybody who falls into this and is in this situation and is of this description has indeed um, disbelieved in Islam and his kufr akbar, major kufr. Why? The Sheikh says because he has uh, he has basically feared, he's put his fear first over the things of the dunya first over his deen. So he's basically advanced the things from the dunya and put that first and set aside his deen. This is what's happened. And so because of that, uh, his deen has become a secondary matter and therefore he has lost his deen, he has lost his foundations that he was upon and uh, he has fallen into a nullifier of Islam. And so he's obviously surrendered to the dunya and surrendered to these different things from the dunya. Um, leadership, whether it be leadership, whether it be wealth, uh, whether it be position or status, any of these things and the like of that, then this is uh, a naqid and it, it, this situation makes him fall into a nullifier. The Shaykh, he goes on to say, من وقع في شيء من هذه نواقض من باب الخوف مثل أن يخاف على رياسة حصلها أو مال اكتسبه أو ينتظر أن يكتسبه ويخاف من شخص فوقه إن لم يطاوعه في فعل شيء من هذه النواقض أن لا يحصل تلك الرياسة أو يحرم منها أو لا يحصل ذاك المال أو يحرم منه أو لا يحصل ذلك الجاه أو يحرم منه أو نحو ذلك إذا كان كذلك فإنه ينتقد بذلك دينه ولو كان ولو كان فعل ذلك خوفا على هذه الأشياء وفعله ذلك خوفا على هذه الأشياء دليل على أنه أنها هي المقدمة عنده على الدين. So the Sheikh says that basically all of these actions that the person is doing, he's obviously he's advancing that over his deen. He's, 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 prior, he's prioritizing the things from the dunya over his deen. And because of this, then he, obviously he falls into nullify of Islam because he's fearing. And the Sheikh brings a couple of other examples here as well. I'll mention uh, in addition to what he's already mentioned. He says, for example, it may be some kind of earning that he's earned or it may be something that he's waiting to earn. So bec because he fears losing it, he, he falls into a nullify of Islam. Or he fears... Uh, 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 somebody above him in his work it could be in his work or somebody in another organization or whatever it may be in, in a situation where somebody is above him in authority and he fears that person and so he he ends up because of this fear he ends up obeying this person in that which nullifies his deen instead of obeying Allah in this situation as well so because of like these kinds of reasons the person ends up uh uh, leaving the fold of Islam because he's uh, he's put he's put his religion on the back burner and he has prioritized the dunya over his deen. This is what the Sheikh is saying. Then the Sheikh brings um, an ayah from Surah At-Tawbah, verse twenty-four, where Allah Jalla wa'ala says, "Fa'in kana abaukum wa abnaukum wa ikhwanukum wa azwajukum wa ashiratukum wa amwaluktuftumuha wa ashiratukum wa amwaluktuftumuha." وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربسوا. So if you look at the meaning of this in Surah Tawbah verse 24, we'll see that the Sheikh brings this as evidence for us. Uh, and let's have a look here. So the meaning of is say if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your kindred the wealth that you have gained, the commerce in which you fear a decline, and the dwellings in which you delight are dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger, and striving hard and fighting in His cause, then wait until Allah brings about His decision, torment, and Allah guides not the people who are al fasiqun the rebellious, disobedient to Allah. So this is a clear evidence of the point that the Sheikh made. And he goes on to say, إِذَا كَانَتْ هَذِي الْأَشْيَاءُ هِيَ الْمُقَدِّمَةُ عِنْدَهُ وَخَوْفُهُ عَلَيْهَا لَا يُبَالِ أَنْ يَرْتَكِبَ لِأَجْلِهِ نَاقِدًا مِنْ نَوَاقِ الدِّينِ اللَّهِ زَوَجَلْ فَمِثْلُ هَذَا لَا يُؤْذَرْ بِهَذَا الْخَوْفِ So then the Shaykh says that with these sort of things, if a person, he puts his religion on a back burner, 
uh, and uh, um, and he fears losing something of these examples that he's given, and he doesn't care about his deen, and he doesn't care about perpetrating uh, and falling into major kufr uh, because of the the dunya, wherever it may be. Then obviously he falls into uh, leaving the fold of Al Islam and f falls into a nullifier of Al Islam. Um, and this person is not excused with this kind of fear. This kind of fear is 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 inexcusable. The Sheikh goes on to say, and he mentions now here, and we nearly finished the lesson. Next five minutes, inshallah, we'll finish. And now comes the exception, and the exception is the person who is under duress. And the Sheikh will explain to us, inshallah, in the next couple of paragraphs. Qala illa al mukrah yani alladhi يكره على فعل شيء من هذه النواقض عن غير اختيار منه ولا رغبة ولا ولا انشراح صدر بل يلجأ إليها إكراها وإرغاما بأن يقول كفرا أو يف أو يفعل كفرا إرغاما وإكراها له على ذلك فمثل هذا لا ينتقد دينه بالإكراه حتى حتى ولو قال الكفر أو فعل الكفر كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى إلا من أكره وقلبه مطمئن بالإيمان لم يستثن تبارك وتعالى إلا المكره ممن قال الكفر أو فعل الكفر لم يستثن إلا المكره قال إلا من أكره وقلبه مطمئن بالإيمان فمن وقع الكفر فمن وقع الكفر أو فعل الكفر مكرها وأيضا بشرط أن يكون الصدر منشرح بالإيمان لا أن يكون عند الإكراه يمارس الكفر وينشره صدره بالكفر بل بهذا الضابط يعني يفعل الكفر مكرها عليه ويكون في الوقت نفسه قلبه كاره لذلك مبغض له ويكون أيضا قلبه مطمئن بالإيمان لكن يمارس في الظاهر القول الكفر أو العمل الكفر إكراها عليه وإرغاما تحت وتأة السيف وتهديد بالقتل أو الحرق بالنار أو نحو ذلك فإذا أكره على الكفر ففعله مكرنا لي فإنه يؤذر أي ناقذ من نواقذ الإسلام يقع في مكرنا لا ذلك فإنه يؤذر قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في بيان ذلك إلا من أكره وقلبه مطمئن بالإيمان لا بد من هذين الأمرين في كوني معذور. So the Sheikh he goes on to say here explaining this situation where the person will be excused and it's when he's under the arrest. And the Sheikh he mentions here he says uh, when a person does a thing from he 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 does a thing from the nullifiers of Islam that would otherwise normally constitute major kufr. But he has no choice in the matter, and he doesn't want to do it either. He doesn't want to do this nullifier. He's being forced to. And the Sheikh says that he is being forced to do this. So neither does, neither is he content with doing it, and he's being forced as well to do it, to do this kufr. And he's under the arrest by way of that. Then the Sheikh says, by way of this, the person does not nullify his deen. Because he's under the arrest, even though he may do an act of kufr, but because he's under the arrest, he is uh, excused because he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't have a desire to do it, but he's being forced, and his heart does not want to do it. In his heart, he's rejecting it, but he's being forced on the apparent actions to do it. Either that may be because he may have a gun to his head, he may have a sword to his neck, you know, he may be uh, being. Uh, threatened uh, uh, with different things to try and make this person do that, then any of these examples where the person is being threatened or forced, etc., as long as two conditions are met. And those two conditions, the Sheikh, he mentions here, which I'll mention, inshallah, and the ayah from the Quran, or part of the ayah is what we read here, إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِهَا وَقَلْبُهُ مُطْمَئِنٌ بِالْإِيمَانِ Meaning that if the person does an action of kufr, because he's being forced, he's being forced to do it, but his heart is full of and content with Iman, 
Iman, yeah? So this person is in situation. The Shaykh goes on to say, what are these two conditions? Now, if they are fulfilled, the person is excused. He says, أول, الأول أن يكون قد أكره فعلا على ذلك والأمر الثاني أن يكون القلب مطمئن بالإيمان. So the first a condition is that he's being forced. He's under the arrest. That's clear. Person's being forced to do and he's being threatened with death and all sorts of things from the likes of those kinds of examples. And the second condition that needs to be met is that his heart is full of Iman. That his, his heart is full of Iman. Yeah. And then, inshallah, we'll uh, stop there and we've uh, reached, or we've almost finished his book. So hopefully next week we're aiming to finish his book and then move on to another book, inshallah. But we'll stop there. I think that's enough for today. Barakallah fikum. And inshallah, we'll meet again uh, in the next uh, lesson with Allah's permission. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi. وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته